Hello friends. Today we're working on the second activity of the arrays chapter. So if you haven't gone and done, uh, watched our video and worked through the activity, the introduction activity of uh, the arrays chapter, uh, go ahead and do that. So, but today we're working on the second activity, storing information. And inside storing information, you should read through the introduction here. It talks about a little bit about arrays and they're still introducing this idea. Uh, also the uh, review here, and we've talked about this before, but if you forgot about it, two forward slashes uh, and some text following it is what we call a comment in our Swift code. And that means that uh, anything that you write in that comment is seen by you, but not seen by the computer. So the computer won't try to run that code. Uh, it's just a note to yourself, okay? So after you've read through this, our instructions are to run the code to see what happens. And then uh, step two would be add values to the array to place your character on every tile in the puzzle world. So just a reminder, in these puzzles, you can pinch in and out to zoom in and out. And you can pan around with your finger to uh, get the orientation how you'd like uh, for the puzzle. And also in these uh, some of these activities, you can tap on the squares, the grid squares, and see some information about them. And in this case, if I tap on this first one here, it says I am at column zero, row zero, column zero, row zero. This is column zero, row one, column zero, row two, row three, row four, and row five. So if you want to orient your uh, grid here so that it, uh, you know, zeros in a place where you, where you know it is, uh, then go ahead and feel free to take the time to, to, to do that. All right, so we're going to run the code here and see what happens. So when we run the code, we get some characters to pop up. And the characters are popping up at row 0, row 1. They're not at row 2. Row 3 and row 4 have characters, but row 5 doesn't. Okay, so if we look at our code here, We've got um, a, a variable, an array, called rows. And I know it's an array because it starts with a left square bracket and ends with a right square bracket here. Uh, and I see that it has in it the uh, integers 0, 1, 3, and 4. And those correspond to uh, the same indices uh, that the, um, the same rows that the characters are on, 0, 1, 3, and four. So it appears uh, down here in the next line that there's a function called place characters at rows, which will go ahead and put characters at every row you uh, put in, in the rows array. Okay, so let's go ahead and try uh, this. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either um, insert in here if you'd like to. You can put some values inside the array by uh, pinching here by uh, holding down on on this and entering say like uh, you know two uh, and maybe then I want to move my arrow keys or something or put uh, put a five in here something like that okay so you can uh, add a couple of uh, new uh, integers in there so that we get characters on the second row and the fifth row to complete this puzzle. Actually, before I run this, I want to quickly talk to you about uh, arrays. And this array is a collection of integers here. And we have elements 0, 2, 1, 3, 5, and 4 in here. But um, in, in future uh, puzzles or in your future programming, you're going to be using arrays that have different values in there. So you might have something like var a string array or something like this and it would contain in here you know a, a, a elements that are all strings every array uh, has a certain type and this is a string array that we're making here so only strings can go in here so um, I'll go ahead and say uh, the word zippy that's a string and uh, another string, Samantha. Okay, so this is uh, a, an array that holds string elements, and we have two elements in here, Zippy and Samantha. 
Um, you could also have, say, for example, another array, which uh, maybe I'll say coin flips, okay? And this would be an array that would represent, say, a sequence of coin flips. And I'll put a comment in here where I'm going to say uh, heads is true. Okay, so I could put in a sequence of coin flips here. So maybe the first one was tails, then two heads in a row, then another tails, another tails, and followed by three heads in a row. Okay, so this is an array of booleans, <clears throat> an array of booleans that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different values in it. False, true, true, false, false, true, true, true. So arrays can hold any types of values, but inside any given array, all the values have to be the same type. So if you're choosing to have an array of integers, they all have to be integers. If I were to come in here and put the value one, for example, I would probably get an error here. Yeah, an error because all these values, if, since some of them are Boolean, they all have to be Boolean. If I change that to a Boolean, everything's good again. All right, <clears throat> so I uh, also wanted to point out here um, that comments like here, where it says add any missing rows to your array, that will not be uh, run next time we run it. And if I have some code that I would like to not uh, run, I can also turn that into a comment by putting two forward slashes there. That's a good little trick if you write some code and you're not sure if you want to get rid of it, um, you want to keep it around for a while, uh, just to remind yourself of something, you just put the two slashes in front of it and it won't run anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and run this now and see if we filled up all our characters onto all the rows. Aha, it does them in order. So it did them in order 0, 2, 1, 3, 5, 4. Let's watch that again. I'll read off the numbers, 0, 2, 1, 3, 5, 4. Okay, nice. Now, what if we wanted to uh, go ahead and put them on, say, uh, in the order 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, something like that? Well, uh, we can just come up here, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this array and put in a uh, square bracket, and I'm going to start with the value 5. And I want to show you one other way to do this in Swift Playgrounds. I can um, select my array and pull it, drag it to the right, and that will add enough spaces for, uh, or I, blank items, and it makes it easier to actually add these. Five, four, three, two, one, one more, zero. So I'll change this one to be four. Tap on item three, tap on item two, tap on item one and tap on item and type in zero. So that's a much faster way. It's a nice little thing that Swift Playgrounds has for you to add elements uh, to an array. So here we go. I'm going to run this. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, nice. That's it for this uh, video. So uh, don't forget to go back and watch the introduction. If you haven't yet, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. And uh, give it a like and subscribe if you like them. And we'll see you next time when we talk about iteration exploration. See ya.